When adding inputs to our lab plugins, up until now we have been assuming that we will be getting values for those inputs at the current scene time. So if you are currently on frame 15 or 20, you are assumed to be getting value at that particular frame. But in some cases it might be helpful to be able to evaluate a parameter at random values, uh, time values inside the scene. So you might want to get a value of something at frame 0 and then at the same time get it at frame 20 and then do something with those two values at different times. And this is what I want to cover in this tutorial. So in this tutorial I just want to create a simple plugin that will create a trajectory line that will specify where where uh, an object inside 3ds Max scene will be at this point and then at some point in the future. So to, to accomplish this I created a sphere and I put a simple animation for it moving inside the scene. And uh, I will create a shape plugin which will use our polylines inside the lab which we covered in the last video to create the trajectory line. So I will create this shape plugin, I will place it at the origin and then I'll start editing it uh, to create a plugin. So I'll just go through the same steps as I did last time to set up a basic polyline plugin. So I'll create my polyline mesh and I will also add a, a actual polyline that will just have two indices specifying the two vertices of our line. So I'll create a constant uh, for the first index and I will create a constant for the second index with index 1. Uh, I'll set this up just so we can get this out of the way and we can focus on the essence of this tutorial. Uh, to get the, the position of my sphere I will need to get to its transformation, specifically the translation aspect of the transformation of the sphere. So first of all I will need to accept the sphere into our plugin over here. And to do this I will change the type of the default input that we have here to a polygon mesh just so we can uh, get our sphere from the scene and I will specify the sphere as the input for our plugin. So next thing I will do is right click and add a component in input for my polygon mesh and you might notice that there is a time function uh, and a transformation time function input here and time function is a type of input inside the lab that allows you to sample a parameter at a specific time and this is exactly what we want for this tutorial. This time function over here will sample the actual polygon mesh at a specific time and the transformation time function as opposed to a normal transformation. This will sample our transformation at a specific time. So if I will add this transformation time function, we'll get a new input that is actually an, an X form 3 time function. And we will not get any, anything new inside the user interface because this is a component input of, of our match. If I drag this out, we can see that now we have the evaluate function. And this function accepts uh, a floating point value for our current time and then it outputs an X form 3 which is a transformation at that given time. So to, to sample our transformation at two times inside the scene as opposed to just the current frame I can drag out this evaluate function twice and in the first one I will pass on the 0 which means it's going to be the 0 second inside the scene and the, the second value is going to be 1. This is again in seconds, not in frames, so this means it's going to be frame number 30 at the default uh, max 30 frames per second setup. So I will drag out the resulting transform just so I can get to its translation. And then the translation output for each one of these transforms I will wire as a vertex for my resulting polyline mesh. So I will get the translation of this uh, transformation as well. And the first vertex is going to be my translation at time 0. And the second vertex is going to be translation at time 1, which means 1 second. So the result I'll just wire as the result of my plugin. So now we can see that we have our trajectory over here. It's not in the right coordinates, but we can always change it later on by, by uh, transforming it into the object coordinates of our plugin. And for now, this, this uh, trajectory, it's, it's static. Uh, which means that it doesn't move uh, if I move the time slider inside the scene. And to make it more dynamic, let's add an, a current uh, scene time input to our plugin. And we'll specify this current scene time as the input for the first uh, and, the second, uh, and the second time offset for our uh, sampler function over here. But for the second one, let's add half a second so that it is actually a little bit ahead of the first time. So I'll wire this time here and I will add 0.5 seconds to it. 
and the output is going to be this time value over here. So now if I scroll my time, we can see that the trajectory updates as the sphere moves. Again, this is not the correct uh, transformation space right now, which is why it's not exactly positioned at the sphere transform, but you get the idea of, of how this stuff is sampled. Uh, inside the plugin and you can use the sampling to really sample any parameter such as a float input or or a polygon mesh so to demonstrate time functions further I created a plugin which takes every single vertex of a mesh and offsets it by by half a second and provides a line between this vertex and what is going where it's going to be in half a second it also takes into account the uh, the transformation of the mesh at this time, the next time, and also the local object coordinates, which we didn't really address in our previous uh, plugin. So if I scroll the time slider, you can see that the trajectories actually change according to where vertices are going to be positioned. The plugin itself is somewhat complex. It contains two graphs, one graph that generates the vertices. Inside it, you can see that, that it actually samples uh, each vertex at two times and then multiplies it by some transformation. And the other graph just simply generates uh, the vertex indices based on the number of incoming vertices for our mesh over here. So this is nothing new. We, if you look at the previous video tutorials, you can probably get a grasp of how this is done. But this does demonstrate really well the potential uh, capabilities of using time functions to sample things at uh, multiple time frames inside your lab plugins.